Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I'm here to save the day. I'm here to, here to save the day. <laughs> Soon I will be invincible. <laughs> <laughs> Because, because comics. Welcome to Because Comics. This is episode 27. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and I'm joined by my co host, the enduring Mike Christensen. I will always be here. You have, haven't you? I've been here every time we've recorded Because Comics. That's oh my true. god, that makes sense. For a while, I was a little bit worried. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's been a year. Yeah, Guys, it has we've been, been recording for a year. This is our one year anniversary. Oh my god, we made it. Spectacular. We did it. It was it was touch and We're go. We're finally gonna get to light these fireworks? <laughs> yes. Oh man, I can't wait for what would you describe that specific firework as? Death in a box. Oh my just, god. Just pure death. I'm reading the brand. Yeah, I mean that's what it yeah. says. That's why I bought it. Yeah. I mean, it cost all of the cars. I mean, they weren't mine, so <laughs> I mean, no skin off my teeth. Right. right. Does, skin teeth, off does, your teeth, teeth? does teeth have skin? <laughs> no. Does yours not? That's not the phrase. I really got to go back to the dentist. I've got a lot of questions. Uh, guys, thank you for listening for a year. Unless yeah. this is the first episode you listened to, in which case, welcome to the show. And you've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> guys, thanks for sticking with us for this whole year. We've had such a good time doing this podcast. Yeah, and we wanted to sort of, before we get into our poll list, which is going to be a little different from usual, but just for this special episode, we wanted to sort of talk about how the podcast came to be. Yeah. It was funny because before you'd brought it up, a few you know, months before you'd brought up the podcast, I had sort of had in the back of my head, because we would have conversations at work a lot about comic book characters, and I would drop some trivia, and you'd be like, wait, really? That was that character's origin? I'd be like, yeah, man, it's crazy. It's really weird. Iron Fist wrestled a dragon. Uh, like I that, love that. That kind of thing. So I had had in the back of my head, like, it would be fun to do a podcast where, like, we just go through, like, an X-Men character's Wikipedia page or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. Something. Can you believe how strange this is? Yeah, but you're like, uh, something like, well, maybe not. And then you came to me later and you're like, hey, we're thinking about doing this podcast and thinking about doing, you know, a segment or something, like, comic book related, and the conversations kind of came from there. Yeah. And we kind of got that. Like, we didn't do the Wikipedia page, but we do the equivalent where I find a story that I think is bananas, uh, whether it's well-known or kind of obscure, and just watch Jay's reaction and record it for the podcast. <laughs> Which is essentially what we were doing when you were first telling me those. Yeah. You would just tell me something ridiculous and I would go, that is just outrageous. Exactly. That can't be a real thing. And that's kind of how we end up with this podcast. The Gabe segments and stuff are just some like fun things we like to add, but at the heart of it, it's because we just love really, really weird stuff. <laughs> really <laughs> weird comic stories. It's true. And that kind of segues us into our poll list, because for this episode... We're not talking about what's coming out right now. We wanted to actually talk about the first comics that got us into comics. The ones that, like, when you look back into your childhood or whenever you started reading comics, what was the cornerstone? Mm -hmm. What was the one that set off the rest? What was the straw that broke the camel's back? (laughs) Fine, I'll start reading comics always. Jeez. What was yours? Mine was The Return of Superman. It's a very well-known comic Mm -hmm. because it basically takes place after this huge event when, if anyone remembers, if you were alive then or have heard about it, when Superman died mm-hmm. the first time he died because I think he's died since maybe mm, I don't I can know come up with, but. maybe not maybe that was the only time he died but it is the big <laughs> it was actually it was not the first time he died I promise you it that it wasn't he's died in the 50s a couple of times well not being like a what if like yeah being like, that's exactly not like right. a what if moment this was like a canon moment when yeah. Superman died and he was killed by Doomsday it's a very big story mm-hmm. and like DC made all the money and they were like oh man we killed Superman we gotta bring him back because he's Superman and yeah. so This story was about the return of Superman. Mm -hmm. Now, the story is pretty bonkers because basically it's what they've done anytime a Superman character or a big hero has died or Mm -hmm. gone missing. You always have the replacements that show up. Yeah, with like Captain America did that. Exactly. Batman did that Mm -hmm. recently for a while. And it's just. The story was originally called. Now it's called The Return of Superman. At the time, it was called The Reign of the Superman. Right. Because it was. There were four different comics. Yeah. There there were four different titles going at once. And they each brought in a different Superman replacement. We have (laughs) Superboy. We had this guy that wore like Ray Bans, like a. The Eradicator. The Eradicator. We had Cyborg Superman, who everybody totally thought was nice, but he was a cyborg Superman. Like, he, he was totally evil, guys. He literally looked like the Terminator. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> like, come on. And then the other one was just steel. Like, and, yeah. and they were like, okay. Just just Iron Man, basically. Iron yeah. Man with a sledgehammer. So these were the four people that were going to, like, replace Superman. And not to go too deeply in the comic, because they're, you know, it's 
ridiculous, it's crazy. Eventually, Superman comes back, and he was just, like, asleep for a while? Yeah. sure, why not? With a mullet. Yeah, with a mullet. He came back with a super mullet, <laughs> yeah. um, oh, and was man. wearing, like, a black costume with, like, a silver S on his chest. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was just silly. He was <laughs> so 90s. So 90s. Um, but anyways, this is a comic that I, I picked up when I was a kid, and I think I was given it as a present. Now, and I'm curious, had you read Death or Death of Superman or World no, of Superman? No, I just picked that up, and I had seen the Richard Donner films. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd known just from being around other kids. Like, I knew who Superman was, but I didn't ever read comics. And, yeah. like, as a kid, if you'd go in a comic book store, you'd pick it up, and you'd be like, oh, my God, Superman is blue, and he has lightning powers, because that happened for a while. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. Was that was around that time. But I remember picking this up. It was in trade, so it wasn't, like, the individual issues. It was all in one big, thick, kind of, like, graphic novel-style book called Return of Superman on the front with the four Superman, and then, like, Superman flying out the front. And I was mm-hmm. like, this looks like a lot, and, you know, <laughs> and I eventually got it. And I read it, and I obviously I I guess I figured out right away that he was dead because they say that right at the front. But I didn't mm-hmm. have to live through the sadness of being a kid, watch Superman getting beaten to death because that totally happened. Yeah, but it yeah. was my first time into really just. It started off, I guess, what you could call like the nexus point of my enjoyment of really weird comics because that comic is really weird. It is. It, it is very strange. It's not like uh, you know, not, it's not like easing you into like you know he's got a uh, responsibility and he's gonna fight some villain. It'll be weird, but you know. It's because it's part three of like the three part story. There's the death of Superman, which is basically just a fight. Just a rumble. Uh, There's World Without Superman, which is very heartfelt and very, you know, uh, very moving and emotional. Mm -hmm. And then there's Return of Superman, which is just bananas. Yep. And and starts the path of Hal Jordan going crazy. Like a lot happens in that comic. I remember even at that age, not knowing anything about comics, being like, that's weird. He just kind of just came back and it wasn't like, it wasn't like him fighting death, like metaphorically or really like, mm-hmm. it wasn't like any sort of like him struggling to come back and like save everybody. He would just like showed up and he was like, Hey, I'm like not dead. And, uh, well, I'm Superman again, I guess. And everyone was like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess I finished that going like, I'm going to read comics always. Yeah. So Mike, what was your first comic? Mine was the, I mean, that wasn't the first comic, because I had read other... I read some Spider-Man comics, but they didn't get me in. They didn't hook me in the same way. But for me, it was in post-2000, uh, when Ultimate Spider-Man came out, which was designed to get new readers it in the was. comics. It did a very good job, too. I remember picking that up as well. I yeah. loved it. It's great, and it's really solid. I had the first two... My, my first comic, really, was the first two hardcovers, which is, like, 20 issues of fantastic comics. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's Brian Bendis and Mark Bagley, and just doing a very... Very pared down, much simplified version of Spider-Man, which I think I'd seen the movies by the point I'd read the comic. But there are lines of dialogue, like literally J. Jonah Jameson flipping through Peter's photos going, crap, 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 like that is literally pulled directly into the film. It was kind of a huge influence on those movies, and I remember just reading it and getting it. Like, that's when I finally kind of got Spider-Man. Like, I'd seen the cartoon, and I liked the cartoon. But, like, I I got Spider-Man when I read this comic, and there's some moment where he's trash-talking Green Goblin, and in his head he's going, what am I doing? Why am I mouthing off like I'm so much, like, like I know what I'm doing? Like, I have any idea what I'm doing in my life right now? And he says, well, I guess it's either that or I pee in my tights. Like, and it's sort of like I got it. I was like, oh! Now I get it. I get you now. Like, <laughs> this is just a self-defense mechanism. It's your way of coping. And, like, the Bendis, the Brian Bendis dialogue... He has a lot of fans and he has a lot of detractors because of his dialogue specifically. For me, he's kind of always been that like very influenced by Aaron Sorkin kind of style Mm -hmm. of dialogue. And I love any kind of writing like that, like (laughs) up to and including like Kevin Smith and people, just people who enjoy dialogue for dialogue's sake. Like I'm totally on board. I have no problem with it. And for that series, it works really well. Like he writes a really great Spider-Man. And the first appearance of Doc Ock in that series is fantastic. And there's a scene, there's a really great scene in the second hardcover where he fights Dr. Octopus for like an issue and a half. It's this big epic fight and Craven shows up and he gets punched out in two minutes, uh, two <laughs> seconds, because he's just a reality TV star. Nice. And then Spider-Man has this great scene where he gets interviewed by the press for the first time and kind of gets to like talk about who he is. And it's just like, I don't know, I I have such a nostalgia for those comics because they really like hooked me in. Well, yeah, they were they were the, the nexus, yeah. the starting point. And I was the perfect age for them when I was reading them. I was like, you know, 14, 12 or whatever, you know, and pretty close to Peter's age in those comics. Like it was like exactly right for me. Yeah. So that's like the perfect starting track. Uh, yeah, I, that was, that was me. That was how I got in. All right, guys. So those were our original polls. Yeah. And now that true. takes us into our main segment. Superman versus the amazing Spider-Man. 
the battle of the century. The time, 1976. The place, probably New York City, because that's where both DC and Marvel were based. The players, Carmine Infantino and Stan Lee. They were the ones in charge of DC and Marvel, respectively. Wow. And they agreed that, yes, Superman and Spider-Man were going to meet and they were going to fight. That <laughs> is amazing. I had no idea this is what the story was. And I'm very glad I didn't know ahead of time. I did not tell Jay that what we were doing for the main segment because I wanted to do a crossover, like something like between the two companies. Because I like I liked that idea for our, our first year anniversary. Like that made a lot of sense to me. And it also strangely worked that with both our polls. Uh, polls was mine was Return of Superman and yours was Ultimate Spider Man. Oh yeah, it was. I was so delighted when that worked Jeez. out that way. But the, it has a lot of Spider Man raining death upon people b- below actually no no he doesn't kill oh anyone this God. time this is this is a landmark episode <laughs> if spider-man doesn't accidentally kill somebody in this but it does open with a prologue prologue one uh which is about superman where he fights a giant robot in metropolis makes sense like, a, like a thing a huge robot just knocking over buildings essentially <laughs> like uh like power ranger style just like punching cardboard buildings kind of yeah wow kind of yeah because huh. it's it's smashing up these buildings and there's the voice of the uh you know the person controlling it saying that they hoped that superman would show up to make this more meaningful and the robot knocks him into a building uh, and then uses a laser to blast superman through a few buildings oh superman tries tunneling beneath the robot and he tries to push up under its foot okay but he can't push it because there's some sort of gravity ray and he's like oh god it's attacking me from all angles <laughs> but then it, he realizes no that's actually how the robot's staying standing like it's too heavy to kind of support its own weight it has these gravity beams on its feet so that when it walks it actually can keep itself upright he flies up and pushes the robot straight down into the ground and buries it down to its shoulders. <laughs> just deep into, like, the grass. <laughs> like uh, one of those goofy scenes at a beach. It's like, look what happened! But then the robot head pops off and flies away. And Superman flies after it and smashes it open, but it's empty. And out of the body, Lex Luthor opens up a hatch and just laughs. And he's like, ah, Superman fell for that and flies away in a jetpack. Didn't he go after him then when he, he's in the jetpack? He doesn't even notice him, I guess. He's just somewhere else? Well, he's smashing a robot head up in the sky. <laughs> I guess. You can hear, like, hummingbirds. Yeah. It, Anyways. He has super senses throughout the rest of this series. <laughs> um, Superman goes back to the Galaxy Communications building because at this point he works in TV news. What? Yeah, he worked for TV news for a while, which meant, guys, there was a time when he was on screen. <laughs> nobody else could Talking be- about how, hey, Superman did this thing. Lois interviewed him and not me because I'm here, Clark Kent, not Superman. Look at our faces next to yeah, each other. Yeah, also, like, the screen cap of Superman's face right next to Clark Kent's face. Yeah. Just being like, anyone see any? No? Nothing? I What's mean, different? Any different here? Guys, we have to just accept that that's how the DC universe works just and just works. move on. <laughs> but Clark's boss sees the news footage of the robot on TV and goes, Clark, how could you get scooped like this? Weren't you covering this story? Would Walter Cronkite let a story like this slip through his fingers? No. And if you know what's good for you, Clark, in the future, neither will you. So Clark's, you know, on thin ice. Mm. But then he sees the footage of the robot coming out of the bay. He realizes, like, oh, it came from the sea, so I, or the water, and follows the trail and sees this basically giant undersea base, which is walking on robotic legs, and it attacks him. It wow. grabs him with a big arm, and Superman is brought inside this, this chamber, and he's face-to-face with Luther. He's not trapped in any way yet. He's just in the same control center. And he's like, ah, Luther, I should have suspected that, you know, only someone like you would have smashed up a city just for a theft. And Lex is like, that wasn't the whole plan. I also wanted to get you here so I could do this and flips the switch. And these lasers, which are powerful enough to actually damage Superman, like hurt him. Really? They start forming like a grid around him and he has to sort of dodge out of the way of them. But he uses his super speed because that's a thing because he's super fast. And he dodges through the lasers and attacks Luther. But Luther fires a laser from his wrist and dazes him. Like, he can't see. He's seeing spots. And Superman manages to grab the control chair and he smashes it so the lasers are turned off. But Luther has maybe a, a just a split second before he's going to regain his sight and grab Luther and take him to custody. So he takes this tiny and little... And snap his neck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, you really... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and he takes out this tiny computer chip, which... Not tiny for our standards, but tiny for the 70s. Right. And so put, it was like the size of like a car? It's like the size of a key. Oh, okay. And he puts it in a pneumatic tube. It's what he stole from Star Labs. Oh. And he puts it in a pneumatic tube and sends it away to his alternate hideout. They're firing lasers at each other and Superman melts the bulkhead and starts flooding it. And, and Luther's like, ah, get me out of here. And, and Superman takes him to jail. We cut to pro 